from the High Definition Production Center of Troy University's Broadcast and Digital Network at Troy, Alabama's International University. This is Troy Trojan Vision News. Hello and welcome to Troy Trojan Vision News for April 10th, 2017. I'm Justin Walker. And I'm Nathaniel Rodriguez. Thank you for joining us this evening. Robert Bentley is expected to resign as governor of Alabama this evening. Reports say he could make the announcement at any moment. Bentley's resignation comes on the day that hearings on his impeachment began in Montgomery. The resignation would come amid, amid allegations he misused state resources during an affair with staff member Rebecca Mason. With Bentley's resignation, Lieutenant Governor Kay Ivey will assume the position of governor. Ivy is expected to be sworn in tonight and will be Alabama's second female governor. Home Sweet Troy Week wrapped up on Friday. Students took the time out of their evening to help raise money for the fight against cancer. Jalen Bivens has the details. Friday evening, students gather out in front of Shackerford Hall to participate in Relay for Life. Today we have Relay for Life, which is a fundraiser for the American Cancer Society that's held in communities all over the United States every spring. Dodinsky went further into detail about the event and what happens with the money that's raised. It is a fundraiser for the American Cancer Society. It helps fund all the money is goes to the American Cancer Society and it helps them fund cancer research as well as patient programs. Last year's Relay for Life theme had to do with countries from around the world. This year, organizations have a new theme to work with children's books. This year, it's Dreaming of a World Without Cancer, which I've asked them to interpret as a children's storybook theme. So I've asked each of them to pick out a storybook and then decorate their campsite accordingly. Dudinsky says that this event is very personal to her since she had a family member that had cancer. Do you know anybody, do you personally know anybody that's uh, survived cancer? Yes, my father is a survivor. He has been uh, declared cancer free for the past two years. And so it touches me personally as well as many members of my family. Jalen Bivens, Troy, Trojan Vision News. If you would like to learn more about Relay for Life, you can visit their website at relay.acsevent.org. Troy University offered young dancers a chance to learn what Troy's Department of Theater and Dance has to offer in a day-long event focused on learning and recruiting. Adoria Hughes has the story. Saturday, Troy University's Department of Theater and Dance held their fourth annual Day of Dance Camp. Many students from around the Southeast were able to come and learn different dance combinations, including ballet, jazz, and hip-hop from guest instructors. Day of Dance is our way um, of recruiting young dancers to this campus. Um, the Department of Theater and Dance has so much to offer and a lot of people just don't know about it. So it's our way of getting them here, introducing the program to them and giving them a great day of instruction. Students that attended Day of Dance were able to gain experience and work with skilled dance instructors and get an insight into Troy's dance program. Well, they get the experience first and foremost, which is really great for high schoolers and younger um, students to have the experience of professional teachers teaching them who have danced all around the world. But also, they get to have sort of a, a college experience while they're here and see what it would be like to be at Troy, which is really cool for us to give them this early on so they can kind of be thinking about us because we want them here because it's an amazing program. It's an amazing school. And one dancer who took part is already looking forward to becoming part of Troy's dance program. I'm really excited about learning new techniques, challenging myself, getting to meet my new teachers, and getting to make connections with students that hopefully I'll be getting to go to school with for the next four years. Adoria Hughes, Troy, Trojan Vision News. The day culminated with a chance for the young dancers to watch Troy's dancers perform in Shine On Saturday night in the Trojan Center Theater. There is a Troy University student organization designed to teach young men into becoming more involved with community outreach. And in turn, become better leaders. Tremaine Davis gives us a look at the story of University's 101 Elite Men. 101 Elite Men is a campus organization that is known to bring in a lot of young men who struggle with this transition from high school to college. And that is why the organization was formed to help those type of students. It um, basically brings males together to try to encourage them and enrich them with some um, skills that they may not have been taught at home. Um, also, it's to bring males together to um, to learn how to be more professional and to become more of a man once you get to college. Um, a lot of times we've learned that 
the transition between a high school student to college is very hard. So we try to prepare guys who are like, like each other and to grow and learn from each other. The organization is also known to have discussions with the young men about current issues that are happening in America. We, we talk about certain topics such as, you know, the, like gun violence. We talk about um, like relationships. We help people build, like, build, you know, like we try to give people a good basis for like their morals and, um, you know, we try to guide them in the right direction. Mentoring young men is not the only thing one-on-one -on -one elite men is known for. They also do community service like Campus Kitchens where they package up leftover foods and send it to boys and girls clubs and surrounding areas. Sometimes for community service, one-on-one -on -one elite men partners up with Troy University's Campus Kitchens. Every week or every other week on Thursdays we help with meal preparation and we just basically take the, take the leftover food from the Troy Dining Hall, and we would prepare it, put it in the freezer, and on Fridays, we deliver it to the children, or basically around the campus. One on One Elite Men meets every two weeks at TC and 212 on Wednesdays. Tremaine Davis, Trojan Vision News. If you would like more information about becoming a part of 101 Elite Men, you can contact Williams in the Student Involvement Office in Trojan Center Room 215. Now, the latest in Trojan sports on Troy Trojan Vision News. Welcome back, sliding into the leadoff spot of our sports segment tonight. The Trojan baseball team, they took on Georgia Southern to close out a weekend series against the Eagles. Sundays at Riddle Pace Field, where the sun shines down on the Troy baseball team. And on this Sunday, it shined down on a 4-0 win over Sunbelt Conference opponent Georgia Southern. Head coach Mark Smart comments on how much his team needed to win this game. Well, I think it's critical. I mean, you just can't afford to get swept anywhere. Home, road, doesn't matter. And, you know, today uh, we played really well. We found a way to score a, a run and then another run, and we kept extending the lead. Although we didn't get the series at home like we expect to and plan to, uh, today was a must win. I was really proud of the win today. And after taking two of the first three games in the series, on Sunday, Georgia Southern ran into a brick wall. That brick wall pitched eight and a third inning strong, only allowing three hits. That brick wall was six foot four Troy starter Andrew Crane. Andrew Crane was terrific. He was the story of the day. He went eight and a third shutout baseball, and we ended up getting the shutout for him. I was proud of that. But he set the tone early. He gave us a chance to get a lead, and he kept the lead, and I was really proud of his work. Not only was Crane's performance on Sunday dominant, but it was much needed needed as the bullpen was depleted after the first two games. Well, it's critical because you know, both in game one and game two, we were in the bullpen earlier in the game. I'm not sure we, who, who we have on the next midweek game, but it saves our bullpen where we can go in and go at them strong, win that game, and keep our momentum going into the weekend and get our guys some innings. If we'd had to go to the bullpen in the fifth or sixth inning, that's a totally different deal. So Andrew bypassed those guys through his great work. And though the Trojans dropped two of three, they did win one. Both Crane and Coach Smart commented on how important this game could be down the stretch. Oh, it feels great. I mean, it feels great to get my first win out of the way, and now we can just move on to the next game. So I, I think it's imperative if you have any chance to stay in the race. You know, we're not knocking on the door of first place by any means, but if we do make a run late in the second half, this game might be the game that turns the corner. The Trojans will be taking a trip up to the state capitol this Tuesday to take on the Alabama State Hornets. Game time starts at 6 p.m. The Trojans softball team did not have the same outcome as the baseball team. They were swept by number 16, Louisiana Lafayette. The Trojans were defeated 11-0 by the fifth inning of the game. The Trojans were able to hold off the Cajuns through the second inning, but unfortunately, the Cajuns took the lead after Aaliyah Creighton hit a home run in the third inning, and it was all downhill for the Trojans after that. Stephanie Snyder and Cassidy McDilda earned Troy's first two hits of the day in the middle of the second inning, but the Trojans just couldn't get anything across the plate. The softball team will have a few days to regroup. The next game will be at home this Friday against Sunbelt rival Louisiana Monroe. Game time is at 4 p.m. The men's track and field team placed second, while the women placed fourth at the Bill Carson Invite. Zach Douglas followed his strong performance at the Florida Relays by throwing an 18.09 meter in the shot put. Connor Brookman won the javelin throw with a personal record of 56.26 meters. And as for the women, Karina Cox gave the Trojans their first win of the weekend with a throw of 52.64 meters in the discus. Niata Alexander ran a personal best in the 100 meter dash with a time of 11.88 seconds. And the outdoor season continues at South Alabama's Multi and Invitational and Mobile Thursday through Saturday.